Yes. Um, so my mother uh, is fairly religious. And I've just discussed these issues with her a few times. And she, she's religious, but she's also fairly open-minded. And I remember I said to her, you know, one time, well, you know, I don't ever want to die. And she just started laughing at me. And she said, oh, well, that's silly. You know, and because she's a scientist, she said something like, well, everybody has to die. And I said, well, no, you know, maybe if um, we have advances in biotech and stem cell research and, you know, all these various things, we can actually live a really long time. And so she said, it's impossible. I, well, what do you mean it's impossible? People thought it was going to be impossible that, that we would go to the moon. We went to the moon. Oh, but that's different. How is it different? You know, she just really, she was unwilling to accept the idea that it might be possible for human beings to live longer. And it's because she subscribes to this idea that there's this natural course of life um, and that there is a God and we all go through this cycle and we eventually wind up in heaven or hell, <laughs> depending on how you live your life. And she's really comfortable with that. And so I think that there's a lot of uh, people, as we talked before, that are just really uncomfortable with the idea of change um, and the idea that a society could be different where um, people will be around for a long time. It scares them. Uh, I know there are Luddites out there that uh, are fearful of change and new technology, but uh, the world's going to be a better place. Uh, there'll be more opportunities. Uh, there'll be, uh, as far as boredom, I mean, come on. I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, it, it, you look over, over the past, uh, you know, our ancestors couldn't have gone skydiving or rolled roller coasters or, or done anything of that kind. And the options are only going to increase for us. The third thing I want to say actually about this, a very important thing, is that actually these therapies, when they first come along, they will be very expensive, but they'll also be rather dangerous because they'll be very experimental. So actually, in a very real sense, we should be thanking the wealthy for being the guinea pigs that will go there first. If you want it at all, you're going to have to let the rich have their, have their day in the, in the early days of the technology and in, in order to get it for everybody else. Right? I mean, early cell phones were incredibly expensive. Right? In, the, in the 1980s, mobile phones were thousands of dollars each. And now you go to China and they're everywhere. This is a third world country. I mean, you go to Africa, people have cell phones in India and Africa. I mean, it's incredible how inexpensive cell phones are now, only 20 or so years later. And so that the same impulse that would deny the rich life extension simply because they're rich and you can't and simply because you can't have it for other people is exactly the kind of policy that will destroy all technological innovation. People with greater means are going to have access to the best medical technology fastest. Um, but I mean, you know, as we as we've seen in the past, these advances tend to make their way to the general populace for, fairly rapidly. Um, in 1922, they first discovered insulin, and this technology, you know, freed a lot of diabetics from needless death. And you know, as we see today, you know, people of very modest means have access to insulin and diabetic treatment. Benjamin Franklin wrote to a friend in 1773, I wish it were possible to invent a method of embalming drowned persons in such a manner that they might be recalled to life at any period, however distant, for having a very ardent desire to see and observe the state of America a hundred years hence. Today, cryonics is the process of preserving humans after death by storing them in liquid nitrogen typically at a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. In this cold storage state, metabolism and decay are nearly completely halted. Viruses, bacteria, sperm and eggs, embryos at early stages of development, insects and even small animals such as small frogs and some fish can be cryogenically frozen, preserved for an indefinite time and then reanimated back to full healthy life. Barring social disruptions, cryonicists believe that a preserved person could remain physically viable for at least 30,000 years, at least long enough for advanced medical technology to revive them. And we don't know what it's going to be that allows us to um, reanimate and, uh, and be restored to um, health and youth, um, if anything. But as I'm fond of saying, it's a lot better odds 
to be frozen than to let the worms eat you. I think Cryonix is a very logical uh, gamble, if you want to put it that way. Uh, uh, your next breath is a gamble. Someday it won't be there. But uh, I, I feel that the chances are very good of uh, a brighter future coming out of this. I certainly hope so. There's a, a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me that are wrong if, if not. And uh, I never did like the idea of decomposing in a box. And actually, one of the reasons that I decided Cryonix was uh, the most effective approach was that there is no, so to speak, deadline for the development of the technology. If it takes an extra decade or an extra 20 years or an extra whatever to develop the technology to restore someone to good health, not a problem. Because I think if we, we powerfully, you know, clearly show that argument, suddenly people will realize, well, cryonics kind of makes sense. It's a big gamble, but at the rate technology is developing, you know, however badly frozen these people may be, you know, a century from now, a millennia from now, there may be a very good chance they can be brought back. One of the essential themes for me as a physicist is, is asking the question, does anything in cryonics violate the laws of physics? And the answer to that is clearly no. There is nothing at all in the laws of physics that says this can't happen. And so it's important to realize that a lot of technologies that uh, people thought were completely impractical, that had insurmountable barriers, have been developed in the past you know, 100 or 200 years. And, and yet people often, you know, detractors of these technologies, often made arguments basically to the effect that the laws of physics, while not strictly prohibiting this, make it vanishingly unlikely. So people made arguments against rocketry, for example, basically saying that there's no way, there's no way that rockets will ever you know, get off the surface of the Earth and go off to explore the planets, and, and they were wrong. And I, and I think that it's a, if you take an honest look at the history of technological forecasting, scientists and engineers tend to be really bad at this sort of thing. Uh, I think that the remarkable thing about cryonics is that uh, you can get large percentages of the population to find it intriguing uh, if you just describe it to them, and even large percentages to find it plausible and um, something that they think there's a substantial chance that might work. But just, as we all know, <clears throat> an itsy bitsy tiny percentage of the population actually chooses it. So there's, there's a disconnect there, and that's one of the interesting puzzles about it. Really what started it for me is uh, since about the age of five, I've wanted to be an astronaut. So that's, that's what I've aspired to be. And uh, a knee injury prevented me from even considering pursuing that career. And my hope is if, if cryonics works, that'll take me to a period in time where uh, I can fulfill those goals. I think they think I'm a little crazy sometimes. And I've talked about it on my interview show. I have a I interview, I have an interview show here in Santa Barbara called Alive After 65. And I've often talked about it, encouraging people. I, I think, uh, you know, I guess the religious people think it's not necessary because they're going to heaven anyway. But the people who are agnostics or, or aren't so sure of their religion, why I think it's a, a very wonderful alternative for hope that one will come back and see what's going to be happening in the in the world it's, uh, in terms of cryonics if 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 there is anything negative it's usually poor press or something like that 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 just exaggerates the wrong aspects of it but I think that in in the near future people are just going to become aware of it and it's just going to be a positive outlook uh, but as a general rule when I first got involved I encountered almost nothing but hostility when I would go into the field to collect a patient um, today that environment is vastly different already. It doesn't mean that d people are going to be signing up for this themselves in droves, but at least they are not working as hard to prevent people from doing it.